and I'm gonna do something I have been saying I was gonna do for probably a year now, and that's go over the particulars on this Cutlass. Uh, this is a 1986 Cutlass, Cutlass Supreme. Basically a, I say stripped down, but it's just a base model. Uh, just a bench seat car. Uh, right now it's got about 32,000 miles on it. I uh, bought the car a few years ago, a few years ago off of eBay. Uh, bought it out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Flew up there, drove it home. Uh, not much in the way of mods as far as the exterior goes. When I originally got the car, it had 14-inch wheels on it, and uh, of course those are pretty impractical and tires are hard to find for those. So I replaced them with these 15 inch kind of like factory style knockoff wheels I got these from Summit Racing I don't remember the brand but uh, they're 15 by 7s all the way around I believe um, the car is lowered 2 inches in the front I did that with uh, Beltec spindles I think the part number is actually 2100 if I remember correctly but uh, the rear is lowered two inches with, I believe, it's been a while, but I believe I used uh, A-body coil springs off of an A-body. And I don't remember why I used those. I don't know if I read online somewhere that those would work, but uh, and give you, still give you a good ride, but they did work very well. Doesn't ride rough or anything at all. But that's basically it. It's just lowered, has wheels on it. Uh, yeah, as far as exterior, that's pretty much it. Tell you what, let me get the floor jack out and lift up the rear, and we'll go from there. All right, moving on to the rear of the car. Uh, this is a Spectra brand replacement gas tank for a Buick Grand National. You have to use this on a LS swaps because the uh, the factory tank is obviously for a carbureted car and the sump is on the bottom so this has just got the traditional cinder unit in the top uh, it's got a Walbro fuel pump I don't remember the part number uh, and a Spectra sending unit so Spectra tank Spectra sending unit and some people were saying that the filler neck on the replacements did not line up with the with the uh, the door behind the license plate it fits perfect. I didn't have to modify it or bend it or anything. I don't believe. If I had to bend it, it wasn't much. Also, if you're doing one of these swaps, make sure that you put some kind of rubber isolator between the strap and the tank, or the vibrations and noise will drive you crazy. This makes a huge difference, this isolation strap. You can see they wrap all the way around the tank. These are off of a Buick Grand National, but you could make some if uh, you couldn't find any. Um, you'll, when I say off of Grand National, I had a Grand National that I parted out, so I have a lot of parts off of, uh, off of that parted out car on this one. And that brings us to the rear end, which is out of the Grand National, out of the part of the Grand National. It's a direct drop in, very easy to do, bolts right in, no mods whatsoever. So that's a factory Posi 342 geared rear end. Uh, the shocks all the way around are Bilstein's, just the classic HD shocks. I can't remember the part number on these. Maybe I can get close and show it to you. People have asked about what the part number was. That's the only part number I see right now. Anything you hear in this video, if you need more details, I can probably find it. If you just uh, ask a question in the comments. The exhaust is pipes, P-Y-P-E-S. Uh, and these are the Race Pro mufflers. I don't, they have three sound levels to their kits. And even though the name is Race Pro, I believe the Race Pros are actually the quietest of the three. Uh, like I said earlier, the uh, springs up here, I believe they're out of an A body. I think they're just like replacements. I can't remember who I got them through. I think I read on the forums where they were. Perfect for lowering without giving it a harsh ride. And for the most part, I think they were right. It doesn't ride rough at all, and it lowered it where it needed to be. 
the sway bars, factory Grand National stuff off the one I parted out. That's pretty much it. Probably want to go through and weld all these mufflers up and get rid of the clamps. I'm not a big fan of clamps. But, uh, yeah. That's that. Oh. On this swap, I used what everybody else is using. This is a uh, Corvette regulator slash filter. Um, this is one of the things I have to do. There's a few things, odds and ends, I need to uh, clean up on this car. And one of these is shortening up this fuel line here. I don't want to be too hard. Just need to get, get busy and do it. Uh, it does have a custom-made drive shaft. That's one of the things you're going to have to... If you're doing an LS swap, make sure you dial that into your price. Um, it's usually something people don't do at home, and it is an expense. The alternative is use a transmission that, that lines up perfectly with your old shaft, I guess, but to be quite honest with you, the, the factory drive shaft on these things is, leaves a lot to be desired. Grab this light. I got the wide band plugged in over here. I'm doing a little tuning, so that's what this wire is. Um, like I said, the Race Pro mufflers. This is a great kit from Pipes. Fits perfect. Nice heavy gauge stainless. I highly recommend this kit for sure. And again, it's got clamps on it, but you could always come back in and weld up all the joints. Not a big deal. All right. Uh, the uh, transmission cross member. This is a 4L80 transmission in here, which fit fine. No modifications to the transmission tunnel at all. I did have to cut one of the ears off the transmission. There's like a little ear that sticks out. I can't remember if it's on the driver or the passenger side. It's a pretty common mod. If you search the forums, it's just what you, everybody's, everybody does. Just get a hacksaw out and cut it off. Or maybe I use the abrasive saw, I don't remember. Anyway, for the 4L80, this is using the G-Force cross member and the nice thing about the g-force and probably just about any aftermarket cross member is if they've got the cutouts for the exhaust so you can tuck it up under the up under the car moving on down like i said 4l80 transmission uh it does have a transgo shift kit i think i have it on the mild setting as far as harshness goes it is the one thing on this car that drives me crazy because uh I believe that the uh, the uh, seal between the output shaft and the torque converter is leaking. So that means you only have one option, that's to pull the transmission back out and uh, reseal it. Uh, if anybody's doing a swap on any transmission, I highly suggest you go ahead and replace all the seals before you put it in. I mean, uh, you might get lucky and have one that doesn't leak, I didn't. And especially the seal for the connector back right here these uh things are notorious for leaking and then leaking fluid into your connector and shorten out everything it's real easy to do in fact i didn't just i didn't don't think i replaced the seal i think i replaced the whole connector on the inside i did do that because i knew it was leaking when i bought the transmission the rear main looks or not the rear main but the tail tail shaft seal looks fine but it just sucks i have to that would be the easy one to fix but i gotta pull the whole transmission to fix the other one but that's hot riding for you. Uh, this does have the CTSB oil pan. I know people have asked me what oil pan I was using. That's it, the CTSB out of the Cadillac. And the uh, next thing that I get a lot of questions about is the, is the uh, uh, shifter linkage. And it's a low car, this is still a column shift car. That's one thing I wanted to do with this car is keep everything looking stock, and that included the shifter. So I was bound and determined to get the column shift working. And I did, it's just that uh, this low car kit comes with that little bracket, which is a very nice piece. Low car makes really high quality stuff for sure. Um, it's, uh, it's kit's really designed for that shaft that connects from this uh, gear shift selector on the transmission up to the column it's supposed to be straight 
but of course you can't do that on here so i had to bend that that rod that you see right there kind of bend it up and i don't know i have it bent up like a pretzel and it works but uh it took a lot of tweaking to get that thing right um that's the one of the things i would say i would look for an alternative um honestly if you don't care about having a floor shifter or an aftermarket like a b&m or Hurst or something like that I think I would just go ahead and do that with the cable operated thing it'd be so much easier it's just that I would just really didn't want the aftermarket look but anyway um, the headers that's another thing everybody asks about these are old I mean they're not old I bought them a long time ago off of eBay and they're actually for an F body like a Camaro or a Firebird I guess uh, I don't remember what here the f bodies are but that's what they are uh they're cheap chinese headers are stainless but they're good they're kind of they're kind of the equivalent to a speed engineering type header which i have no problems with at all speed engineering makes great stuff for the price but i got these dirt cheap on ebay uh you know five six years ago probably one of the problems is you can see that the the header wants to take off on the driver's side and kind of shoots off to the left there but I remedied that, remedied that problem by just making like a little S connector. Some people will heat the header up and try to bend the collector back towards the transmission, but that seemed like a lot of work. So just you can make a little piece of S uh, exhaust pipe and fix it. And on the uh, passenger side, um, the passenger side I had to modify a little bit. And when I I'll show you all that in a second how I modified that to get it to work. Um, the only thing I had to do on the driver's side, I think I had to dent the tube a little bit to clear the steering shaft. Other than that, they fit just fine. Uh, not much else under here. Um, like I said, there's Bilstein shocks in the front um, and the two inch lowering spindles. I don't believe I changed the springs in the front. I could be wrong, but I don't think I did. I don't remember. Okay. Now let me show you how I modified the passenger side header to clear the frame rail. Let's just say this is your header flange on the passenger side. You got your four pipes coming out. Of course, they run down like this okay and just say instead of looking at the header this way you're looking at it from the end so you would have that's the flange and your pipes are coming down like this well what happens on these F body headers is it doesn't clear the frame rail over here so what you get is this header hitting the frame rail, just barely, but enough to where they don't fit. Now what a lot of people do is they'll just simply bolt this, bolt the flange to the, to the head, and then they'll put a ratchet strap on the collector way down here, and they'll pull it this way and just bend it, and it'll swing it off the uh, frame. I put the ratchet strap on there, and it didn't seem like it was going to bend before it pulled all the bolts out of the head. So how I remedied that was... You'd be surprised what a little eighth inch cut. Just get your abrasive saw and make one cut right that all the way through the almost all the way through the 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 header pipe. And then that, when you bend it, you can bend it with your hand after that. You'll be able to bend this in, it'll pull it enough off of the frame rail, and then you'll just go back in and just weld, you know, all the way around the pipe where you cut. Works fine. Um, that's how I did it, and I know now that there are a lot of alternatives to headers for G body swaps now. And I think if I was to do it over again, I would just get the correct headers because that was just the headers on this thing were a lot of work. And like I said, I did this back whenever there were really weren't any swap kits. Now you can get a swap kit from Holly that's got the headers and the, the engine mounts and the transmission crossover, and no telling what else. It probably makes it a lot easier. But uh, anyway, it's hard. It's hard to see from the side, but trust me, it would hit the it would hit the frame without being modified. 
All right, engine, 2007 GMC Sierra 2500 is what it's been pulled out of. It's a six liter LQ4. Uh, if I can figure out how to put links in the description, look at the top of this video right here in this section. I'm gonna try to put a, a, uh, a video to when I had this engine on the stand running and all the stuff that's done to it. Look in the description of that video. It'll tell you everything it's done. It's got a stock bottom end. Um, it's got a cam. The heads are 243s off a of 5.3. Uh, to raise the compression and these have actually been milled 35 thousandths so heads off of a Tahoe or a regular 5.3 Silverado or 243s and uh, you just do that to raise the compression on the engine I don't remember what the final compression ratio is when you do that uh, intake Dorman uh, in fact I can tell you the part number it's 615900 Six one five nine zero zero. It's supposed to be an LS six clone type intake. Works fine. Pretty good piece. Um, frame rails, just cheap eBay frame rails. You know, just basic bolt-on stuff. I don't you know if I really need to go over the engine that much. It's a swap. Pretty much everybody else, everybody's done, or just a common recipe on these LQ fours. Uh, Dirty Dingo accessory brackets which includes the R4 style AC compressor mount, which I have not hooked up yet. So that's another thing I have to do. Um, I've got some hoses that I need to modify to fit this application. One of the things that uh, I say back in the day, they didn't really have the adjustable uh, engine mounts. So these are what was considered one inch setbacks. Now I think they got some that slide back and forth where you can kind of mount the engine wherever you need it. Um, I kind of wish I would have done some like half inch setbacks because on that side over there, it's very well, extremely close to the firewall or actually the AC box. In fact, it was so close to the AC box that I actually had to notch the AC box. It, uh, the AC box, I had to cut a little square out of it. And then I went to AutoZone and got one of those cheap fiberglass kits and just kind of patched the the hole and kind of made like a divot or an indention there so the head would slide back a little bit. Very easy to do. Sounds complicated, but it was actually very easy. Oh, uh, let's see. Wiring harness is a custom thing. It's the stock harness off the OQ4. But I totally depinned all the connectors and just basically redid the whole harness so it fit a G body. And it follows the factory uh, route from here uh, behind this passenger fender through the firewall. Same way the factory ECM harness was routed. Oh, what else? Oh, uh, yeah, people have asked about. Like I was saying the mounts, the mounts that I used are just one inch setbacks. I can't remember who made them. Um, they were like the only ones available when I did this swap, I think. And it's just a clamshell style mount down, th down there. And the regular frame mounts were a V8 on a G body. Nothing special at all to those. One thing I will say, if you're gonna do a G body swap or swap in general, you need to stay, probably stay away from uh, poly mounts. Certainly solid bushing mounts, but those poly mounts, they really send a lot of vibrations to the car. Try to find some that are isolated with actual rubber. I've done the poly mounts before and they're, the NVH is super bad on those. The fans, these are uh, dual Dorman fans, aftermarket fans uh, with a, kind of a homemade harness. Some relays I made. Um, I don't really know what else to say about that. They're just Norman brand. They are hooked up to the ECM. Uh, like they're supposed to be, in other words. Each fan is controlled. They're not just, you know, both of them on at the same time, both of them off. You just need low cooling, this one will be on, or vice versa. And then, of course, you have the AC and it's hot. And they'll both be running full, full power. So, that's that. I don't think there's much else under here to show you. It's really pretty basic stuff. Oh, 
this. It's pretty neat. This is a Dakota Digital uh, ECD-100. What this does, it takes the VSS signal from uh, transmission and converts the digital output of the transmission to an analog signal that ties into the speedometer cable, so it makes the speedometer on the dash uh, work. There's basically a motor in here that turns this mechanical drive for the speedometer. Works very, very, very good. The, uh, I guess what I was saying earlier about the motor mounts, they need to really need to be forward maybe a half an inch. One of the reasons is the uh, factory style dipstick for the transmission won't work. So I had to use this aftermarket. It's a low car brand uh, transmission dipstick. It's flexible. It's like a flexible braided hose type thing. And even the, the dipstick itself is flexible. Nice piece. Um, just honestly very hard to put transmission fluid in this transmission. It comes with a hose that you hook on the end of a funnel that makes supposed to make it a little easier. But you can see that the hole is so small that it's hard to get a good fill going. It can be done, it's just not, not easy. Yeah, the air intake, it's just a cheap eBay piece. I think it's for a, um, I think it's for a Silverado, maybe like an O2. It's basically just a 90 degree elbow and some pipe. You can probably make one yourself. But the kit, probably cheaper than trying to do it yourself. Not expensive, maybe $50 on eBay. That's pretty much it, guys. I don't know what else to say. Uh, well, I'll show you the interior. Interior, not much to it. That's kind of kind of by design. I didn't really want a bunch of aftermarket gauges and shifters and stuff like that. Like I said, it's a bench seat car. Interiors in mint condition. see here just basically stock I mean that's how I wanted it all the gauges work all the all the idiot lights uh, all work uh, one thing nice about these gen 3 swaps especially the drive, drive by wires is your cruise control will work so the cruise control works just like factory and it's only like four wires to hook up very easy to do uh, let's see what else I would show you, uh, this is a stereo out of that Grand National I parted out. This thing just, when I first got it, just had a basic stereo. I don't even think it had a cassette player in it. This, is, this was considered premium back in the day. I don't know if I can show you how I did. Let's see if I can get this open. No. No, there you go. I know it's hard to see, but this is where I mounted the TAC module, the TAC module for the uh, accelerator pedal. These Gen 3 swaps don't have a accelerator pedal that connects directly to the PCM. It goes through a TAC module, and that's where I mounted it. It's all clean wired. It's I tried to do as good a job as I could as wiring and not making it sloppy. So that's that. Also something else people ask me about how did I do the pedal on this I don't remember the exact part number I know this looks factory but it's not it's actually a drive-by-wire pedal worked out really really good I do have a video on that I'll try to insert it here if not search through my history I think if you just enter G body pedal and search my channel I think it'll come up but it's basically just a modified pedal album 07 pickup Kind of hard to explain. This is the factory arm from this car, and I welded it onto that other piece, the accelerator pedal. Cut the old one off and welded that one on. This is where my OBD connector is. It's in the same place the ALDL was on the factory car. And that's it.